What about dinosaurs? Today on Where We Begin. Welcome back to Where We Begin, and oh boy, do we have a good one today. Uh-oh. <laughs> I'm real excited. Also, I'm Derek. Uh, this is Alicia, Lou, and Xandra. Also, this is a podcast that answers some of the toughest objections to Christianity today. Sorry, I'm doing a, such a poor job today at this. No, you're no, doing it's great. Good. It's just Derek. all mixed together like I'm, a toss Yeah, I'm salad excited. I'm being a, yeah. Um, so I want to start today's episode, after that very rough start, with a a true or false, and I, I just want you to, you know, don't elaborate. I know this is very hard for you all. <laughs> Does life find a way? It's like a Jurassic Park here. True. Oh, oh can we answer? Life do, that is, yeah. Life do make a way. <laughs> life, life do make a way, good. <laughs> uh... It do. I don't know. I'm kind of like a, in a true-false kind of dichotomy. All I right. think sometimes it does. Eh. The, uh, no, I'm just kidding. You can answer. <laughs> that's, that's what I got. Yeah, essentially, yeah, that was, that was a dumb question. Um, it I don't is, even understand. It is, the, <laughs> it is the Jurassic Park question. Oh, got it. Because, uh, you know, coming know. up, uh, you know, this show, many people don't know this week, is actually sponsored by Jurassic World Dominion, opening on June 10th. <laughs> <laughs> and um, and I know, is that illegal? Can I actually say that's that? Should, Not probably, we should talk Jeff to legal. Goldblum is in it, and that makes me want to watch Jeff it. Jeff Goldblum, I, Laura Dern. I know, but uh, it went from one, and I'm saying Sam yeah. O'Neill. Okay, I think is back yeah. in it. It's yeah. worth watching. Oh, so it's exciting. Go. It's exciting. But what you can so okay, so that is fun. I'm looking forward to that. Um, you want to go together? Oh, that'd be so cute. Double date. Double Dutch. Okay. I'm going to need to Google that later. Um, cause I don't know what I'm agreeing to right now. <laughs> but um, so essentially, there's a hint in the question that today we're talking about dinosaurs. <gasps> yeah! Are you excited? Oh, I love dinosaurs. Yeah, I know you do. Who doesn't? They're I'm just going to put my don't. mic away. <laughs> I'm done talking. <laughs> <laughs> you don't like dinosaurs? No. Well, I mean, I don't like dinosaurs. No. Why? What's wrong, wrong. with you? <laughs> dinosaurs wrong. are great. Uh, it, I feel a real affinity to them because big bodies, little arms. I feel <laughs> <laughs> like kind of a dinosaur myself. So, um, you know, they all have the... Um, He's got those little claws. Yeah, yeah, yeah little, little claws. They are adorable. Let's just, I actually have a planter my wife bought for me at one time on my desk. It's a dinosaur. I don't remember what kind, but you've seen it. I have? It's the kind that it's the I told Parasaurolophus. You. There we go. Yeah, I saw yeah. it on your desk. I said, why is there Parasaurolophus on your Parasaurolophus, desk? Parasaurolophus, which means weird head. Um, uh. <laughs> I don't know if it means that, but they do have weird heads. That's why I said that, just to clarify. No, do you think so, it's cephalo? I'll be quiet. Okay. Um, okay, I might be wrong. So what, what we are talking about, essentially the question is this, but what about dinosaurs? Because this is the question that comes up when people are... Uh, um, asking about the Bible and essentially trying to say the Bible is obsolete because if you know if you look at Genesis, um, if you look at the creation accounts, not just there, but the, you know in Job and in the Book of Psalms, there there are other creation uh, accounts given. One thing we don't see is dinosaurs, and yet uh, eventually, yet in, in our history, we unearthed all these these dinosaurs, um, mm. and suddenly this this whole class of animals that died out long before we were here, um, maybe depending on your view on how old the earth is, but um, uh, are, are suddenly there. And it's clear that they would say it's clear that the biblical authors have no concept of mm -hmm. dinosaurs and they should have mentioned them. Um, so, so let's start with that. I mean, what, yeah, essentially what is, for someone who, who asks this, or maybe someone who's answering it, what's at stake here in this question? Because it's really, yeah, it's, it's not just about dinosaurs. Right. Uh, I don't know, Xander, if you want to start off. Yeah, I guess one of the things that might be at stake is people might say, well, are you willing to sacrifice the scripture for the sake of staying along with mainstream science? And if you really believed in the scripture, 
like you would be able to question science because after all, science is always changing. We're sitting on top of this huge mountain of discarded theories that at one time or another throughout human history, everybody believed, you know, like the earth is flat or like the the earth is at the center of our solar system rather than our sun or, or other theories, you know. So um, I think that might be one thing that's at stake is just how how seriously are we taking the scriptures for whoever might be asking that question. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I don't know. Yeah, and I because I think um, you know it comes down to like you know the coexistence dinosaurs coexist with humans and you know these kind of things and so I think you know oftentimes people when they're reading the the scriptures are trying to say well if we read it this way then where do we place the dinosaurs and all of this and so I think there's yeah there's all these dynamics as people are trying to sort all that out when it seems like you know that if they're not necessarily mentioned in scripture and you think they would be yeah and and so. I do want to get to the specific answer of dinosaurs. I know because there, because that's a that's a fun topic. Um, but it is probably helpful first to you know maybe just elaborate. What do we think? Something like the account in Genesis, and there there may be different answers from each of you on this. What is it attempting to accomplish? Like like is this an issue of essentially we just don't understand what type of literature Genesis is? Uh, we don't understand um, what its purpose is. Uh, should it have had dinosaurs in it um, or not? Like, I feel like that's part of the question too. Like, what? how would we respond to that? What is Genesis actually doing? And is that a fair accusation that there aren't dinosaurs in it? Therefore, it, uh, uh, the Bible cannot be true. I think a lot of this comes back to how you're approaching the scriptures. And Genesis tells us a story about the creator who created everything in the beginning, God, he was in the beginning, which is a huge claim. Um, And I think we get really tied up in, you know, trying to figure out the different days and like, okay, well, how did this happen scientifically? Or how did this come from that? Or, you know, other things or you know, people will approach um, other parts of Genesis, like Noah's flood, for example, in the same way, and they'll um, really come at it with saying, okay, what does this tell us about the science versus what is this just trying to tell us generally, first Mm -hmm. of all. Um, And so I think a lot of what we see in Genesis talks about humans' role as stewards of the earth, you know, and like the Noah story, I think also is very clear about how we are meant to be stewards of God's creation and, and care for it. And that's a beautiful picture. And if we get all tied up on like, were there dinosaurs on the ark or what happened there? I think we can maybe get derailed a little bit from what that is supposed Mm -hmm. to be teaching us as children of God. Um, So I'm a scientist, obviously I love, well, I'm not a scientist. I'm I'm trained in the sciences. Um, And I absolutely love the sciences. And um, I think there are a lot of scriptures that have pointed me back to science. And I say, wow, the congruence here is incredible. But I don't go to scriptures with the same mindset that I would go to like my biochemistry textbook or something like that. I don't think that that's the appropriate way to view scripture personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And yeah, thanks. No, that's really good. And it's interesting that, um, again, there, there are lots of things that are not mentioned in the Bible, you know, it's not really this, it's not an encyclopedia Britannica, which you can Google and find out what that used to be. Um, But it it is, um, but for some reason, dinosaurs have been the the sort of one thing that has stuck as, um, oh, but since those aren't in there, this is a major problem. But essentially it's not even that they're not in there. So um, I know there are different views on this, but the issue is perhaps with, um, and I wasn't even planning on going this direction, but now I, I do feel sort of led to go this direction. And, um, but this really is the major question. It's sort of only addressing a young earth view, right? I mean, that's essentially the problem. If, if, you're, if you're a Christian that has an older view of yep. the earth, there's really no issue. There might be the issue of why would God do it like that? Nature seems, you know, cruel, red in tooth and claw. Um, but essentially the issue is really just uh, in a young earth perspective, which just means that the earth was created in six literal days, roughly six to 8,000 years ago. 24 hour days. That there's, 
that there's just so much incongruence with what, you know, through carbon dating and, and, and everything of the picture that emerges from the scientific uh, data that, that that view can't be mm-hmm. um, uh, sort of uh, reconciled. So, what, I mean, is that, I don't know if anyone here is a, is a young earth creationist and I don't, you know, um, there are brothers and sisters, we love them. I don't think anyone is, but um, would they have an answer to that? I mean, other, or is it just, they're not as old as we think they are? Or or maybe if you don't want to go there, what what would be your answer to that? Is, is yeah, there an issue so with it? I think just a lot of people I've spoken with who are on, the, on that young earth um, viewpoint, they do have answers for it. And if you go to the Creation Museum, you'll see, um, you know, displays of Eve and there's a velociraptor walking around behind her, like eating Mm -hmm. plants because they believe, yeah, dinosaurs were there and they had the pointy teeth and the scary claws and everything, but they were just eating plants. And they have answers for things like, you know, Noah's Ark, that he could have rolled dinosaur eggs up onto the ark rather than having them walk two by two because we know that you couldn't have physically fit those creatures on the ark. Right. Um, so I mean, oh, yeah, there are there are yeah. answers for it, and yeah. and I would also add, like I know because I I this is a challenging question, so I I, I think I, I sway. This is a, it's challenging for me because I sway more towards younger theologically, and I don't know enough about the sciences to say that I wouldn't accept the other ones. <clears throat> I think the younger position is probably the most theologically sound. I recognize that there's people would say there's massive scientific um, issues with it and I'm okay and I'm okay with that because I haven't landed on a view so so I guess I'm, I'm in no man's land kind of on this issue still and I'm like let's continue to explore and find out but I do understand from the from the young earth perspective they would say that they would that there are that they have um, fossils where there's like the bones of dinosaurs and people together or like footprints and this kind of stuff and so it shows that that um, dinosaurs and humans did coexist um, now part of the thing we have to remember is a lot of us have shaped our views of dinosaurs from movies, films, Jurassic Park, and these kind of things. And and you get little things like, you know, velociraptors, how they hunt, you know, and like one captures your attention, but then the other two come from the side. You know, can you tell that from from bones and skeletons? I don't know, Xandra would be able to better answer that. But my point is a lot of what we are able, what we shape of what dinosaurs were like oftentimes comes from what we've seen and portrayed. And that's also playing a picture, playing, playing, um, paint, like, it's like playing, it's impacting how we view these things. And so I think from the young earth perspective, they would hold that, um, that these, the animals did coexist with humans. Um, obviously they're gone for some reason, you know, was it a meteor flood or I don't even know, you know, there's all these different, um, I guess possibilities as to where they are now, but they would have that as part of their, Mm -hmm. yeah. So, and with the, sorry to just really quickly. So with the um, bones that they thought were um, fossilized human, which they called homo diluvii testes, which was a form of like ancient human being, they thought um, that was actually a giant salamander that was later found out, an extinct species of salamander. And then for the footprints one, um, actually that's also been contested because if you follow the footprints long enough they get three pointed toes and it's another mm. form of a really small um dinosaur so you're saying so. the young earthers don't have the dinosaurs and human stuff anymore no nope. oh that's, that's been, interesting that's been disproven actually that was just proven a long time ago but it was republished in a book in 1971 by morris who sort of brought a lot of that stuff up in his okay. book about the genesis flood so even though that had been disproven in the early uh 19th century it reappeared in literature later on. I was going to okay. say, because in yeah. the 90s late, yeah. later is when I would have learned. Yeah. Yeah. That's anyway, just to throw no, that No, that's a there. good point. I think that's a good point because we talked about the museum, right? The Creation mm-hmm. Museum and maybe what they have there. So I'd be interested to know what yeah. they have there. Okay. Well, that, that was interesting, I think, because the, um, yeah, like we said, if, if you're kind of hold to an older view, it, it's really not much of an issue exactly. other than the only issue is why aren't they in the Bible, but they they have no issue. But it's kind of interesting to hear um, different ways that those groups, just to be fair to all the groups that, yep. you know, we talk about, um, to what they might actually think. Um, Lou, feel free to chime in. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is class for me. I'm learning. I, I, it would be, it would be very 
ignorant of me to speak when I knew nothing of this topic. Well, and maybe you have a, maybe you, I should be doing more research on this topic, yeah. but it's never once interested me, and I've never actually wrestled with yeah. the truth of this because I, yeah. I actually take the point of view that, like this one just doesn't. I know it matters for some people, and I'm not saying it shouldn't matter. I'm just like it's never been a problem, yeah. and it's not even a question that I ever get from people. So I just don't but really. When you were in your interested. science program, though, did, did other students ever? I mean, seriously, did oh, other students ever push? I thought you were my science in, program. Your science. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my degree. It was a certificate. You mean my, yeah. yeah, my degree, my degree in molecular biology. And yes, we did not go into dinosaurs very much, if I'm being honest. But you weren't questioned on that. Just want to, as as like the Christian in the you know when when people found out you were a Christian, you weren't. Well, sort of like, I mean, How do you I do went that? to a Christian college. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. I remember learning about this in high school, in a public high school, but it was, yeah, I don't know. Okay. I, it's just. Sorry, that's why I'm, I'm not trying thing, to be. Yeah. I was just like, I feel like anything I'd have to say would just be me just <laughs> pontificating. Essentially, what just happened. And, exactly. This yeah. is what I'm yeah, just no, wasting, not good, not good. wasting yeah. a minute and a half on this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> you know, okay. I, I will speak when I feel like I have something to say. You know this. <laughs> we do yes, know this. Yes. Um, yeah. So, okay. So, let's now, let's just get to the, the very specific question. Okay. Why doesn't the Bible mention dinosaurs or. Does the Bible mention dinosaurs? Like, if it doesn't, why not? But does it? Are, are there things that we've we've missed where some of these creatures are, are actually potentially? Obviously, it's not one hundred percent clear, or that would be a slam dunk for us. But um, yeah, essentially, where, is it somewhere in the text? Um, some people point to Job and Alicia, are you looking that yep, up? Yeah, it's fine, yeah. Okay, are you there? It's, yeah, but yeah, go, go ahead. Go ahead and read it, yeah. Well, no, no, I mean, go ahead. I, I was just, I mean, there's kind of two sections, right? I love Job, first of all. If you know anything about me, I love Job, Job and James. But um, All the J's. The Jesus, J's. Job, James. <laughs> Job, James. Beats, Bears, Battlestar Galactica, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, I think some of the question comes in like chapter 40 and chapter 41, where in, in chapter 40, you have this um, animal who is described, be, the behemoth, right? And it's pretty wild. It talks, it's got, um, it says sinews, it says its tail sways like cedar. The sinews of its thighs are close-knit. Its bones are tubes of bronze. Its limbs like rods of iron. So it sounds like pretty crazy and massive um, and pretty strong. But then it says it feeds on grass like an ox, which is interesting. So you got this animal that seems to be really big and massive, but yet it feeds on um, huh? I'll, I'll chime in. This is Littlefoot. That's describing little whatever, whatever the dinosaur. Uh, what is that one? It's a big old land before a, time. Land before yeah. time. Yeah. No, but yeah. what is that type of dinosaur? You know, oh, long uh, neck. The brontosaurus, brontosaurus, uh, brachiosaurus, yeah. something like that. The yeah. real long, the tall, looks like a. That's it. Yeah. I think big old tree trunk and it eats dinosaur. leaves, oh. tree stars. Uh, okay. All right. Thanks, Lou, for that contribution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Thank I, you, Lou. Lou's quoting land before time. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm apparently- sorry I got him to start speaking earlier, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> you had to call him, Derek. He's having yeah. a meltdown, I think. He went to for this podcast. <laughs> Getting back to the scripture, Lou. Um, no, but what else is interesting about this whole thing is in, um, I guess, verse 20 of chapter 40, says, the hills bring him their produce and all the wild animals play nearby. So it's really interesting because this seems to be an animal that the other animals really aren't scared of because they play nearby, but yet this animal is like really big and massive. And so one of the things that they've thought of that this could potentially be in Job chapter 40 is a hippopotamus just because of the fact that it's really big and um, it would be weird for, it would be weird for, I guess it, it, it would be weird for them to, to, to if this was um, a dinosaur, you would wonder, you know, was this, you would think it might be a threat to the humans, but yet this one doesn't really seem to be because it's eating uh, vegetation. But like we talked about, there are dinosaurs that eat vegetation. Um, but then you look at verse four, or chapter 41, you have this Leviathan, which is like this one that's in the water with the fish hook and the tongue. And it's got, it's like shooting fires, all these kind of things, which we we actually don't, necessarily. I don't know of any animal that shoots fire. Um, although there is a beetle that shoots out a really poisonous gas, which is kind of cool. Um, but regardless, uh, you have this whole like kind of watery kind of animal. And so, you know, the idea is that is this more like an alligator type thing? So in other words, are these animals that are familiar to the audience where they can come up to them versus they're not going to be necessarily getting that close with you know, these big giant dinosaurs. So I don't know if I would say that those are dinosaurs um, in that regard, but, you know, I guess there's all kinds of possibilities out there. 
Sandra? Um, uh, yeah, I mean, I, don't, I guess I don't have a ton to add to that. I, I would say I find the KT boundary really compelling. I don't know if you guys oh. have heard of the KT boundary. Mm-hmm. So it's a really fascinating uh, segment in our geological history and like geology, it's like the autobiography of the earth, right? You can go back and see what happened. And on every layer, there's like different ecology, totally different plants and animals. And then you go up and there's to- another mm-hmm. completely different ecology, different things growing. And so, um, there's one little area that they've called the KT boundary and it's made w- with a composition of iridium, which doesn't naturally occur on our planet, but it's very prevalent in meteors mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. asteroids and things mm-hmm. like that mm-hmm. flying around yeah. out there. It's a, like a metal. And so, um, you find a lot of that megafauna, like dinosaur kind of megafauna up to that point. And then after that, zero occurrences. So the thought is that there was a mass extinction potentially that was caused by a meteor. And that I think has been located somewhere in modern day Mexico. There's like a huge crater that's that got that really rich deposit of iridium. So they're thinking maybe that could have been what mm-hmm. happened that killed the dinosaurs. But again, um, I think a young earth more viewpoint wouldn't uh, wouldn't necessarily entertain that that possibility. Mm-hmm. But for me, I've always found that a bit compelling and a really interesting part of our geological history. So why wouldn't the young earth find like that a meteor could have wiped them out? Find because, that compelling because all of the humans would have wiped would, would out. Have with di- I mean, and also um, the view with the flood I think is really important in that viewpoint where the entire globe was covered in a flood and everything went extinct except what was on Noah's Ark on a planetary scale which is why you get you find like tropical plants fossilized at the top of these really high mountains which doesn't really make sense but Mm -hmm. um but all of the that stuff was published again in the 60s before we had an understanding of plate tectonics and so they were trying to use a global flood to explain the extinction of dinosaurs and everything else that happened um before they understood actually how tectonic plates work and i think if they had had that piece they were asking really good questions in the 60s you know and and coming against a lot of uh, misconceptions in geology which needed to be asked and it was great that they these were christian men and i think mostly christian men who were doing this um So, um, but yeah, they missed the plate tectonic piece, no pun intended. And if they'd had that, I think they would have had a more, a better rounded view and not have gone to the global flood thought anyway, but that's that's another piece of the puzzle. Please continue to explain the world to us. I know. (laughs) Every chance you get. (laughs) No, I just have read so much about rocks because I, I think rocks are fascinating. I think dinosaurs are fascinating and we didn't talk about very many, but I thought of the dinosaur you were thinking of. It's Pachycephalosaurus. That's the one you're thinking of with the head. It's got like the part of the head that like shoots off the back. Oh no, that is a Parasaurolophus. Okay. I was right. Okay. And never mind. We'll talk more later about (laughs) nomenclature of dinosaurs. Yeah, we'll, we'll figure this out and then we'll, we'll just let everyone know in the show notes, uh, what we ended up finding. (laughs) No, um, no, that's that's interesting. Now, w- one of the questions, I, um, and uh, we're running out of time here, but this is one. This is a f- I'll, I'll, Lou. This is one I think you can handle. I'd love to hear your response on this, Lou. Uh, but um, I have talked to people before who have said this: that the devil hid dinosaur bones. What to? Throw us conf- off to throw us off. It's a red herring. Us, just make to get us, us confuse us. Yeah. Yeah. Fossilized herring. Yes. Yeah. Um, I would emphatically say that's not true. Okay. Yeah. That's about the only thing I'm. Gonna- <laughs> <laughs> I think that's <laughs> a. Rid- I think. Two I think that's a ridiculous <laughs> belief. <clears throat> okay. Already, I've well, never even heard. Thank that. you for honoring the question yeah. first before you said. <laughs> Sorry, but, probably uh, something to offend someone. I just think that's. That looks like we're trying to avoid anything science is yeah. trying to show us. And I just mm. think that's a very dangerous yeah. thing. Yeah. That's all. Plus it says that God is deceitful if he would have given, like he knowing that would happen, allowed it to happen. Or I've I've read an author who said that God planted it to test our faith. Mm-hmm. He like what? put dinosaur bones in to test our faith and make sure we were really believing the Bible. And that says some bad things about yeah. God's character. Yeah. I agree. Right? Yeah. I mean, that is just like gymnastics. That's hermeneutic gymnastics just to try and <laughs> God prove what tempting you want. us to disbelief. Yeah. 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 That's interesting. Well, I think just to, to wrap it, because I know we've, we've kind of talked about it a lot, would the, each of you now, very briefly, just say real quick, 
what about dinosaurs in, in the Bible? How, how would you help someone make sense of like, if you had one or two sentences just to say, think of it like this, take that sort of weight off your, your shoulders. Cause I think we've had fun with it, but it's, it's a, it's an enduring question because uh, it's a serious question. So yeah, what what would be I your- I think my short answer would be dinosaurs existed and I am I am waiting for the next 10 to 20 years of scientific research to continue to help us learn more about the placement and in, in, in history and how that all works. And I, I just don't wanna jump on anything too early. Yeah. Do not try to use Genesis as a science textbook. Is yeah. my strongest encouragement to anyone. I'm not saying it doesn't give us sometimes some scientific answers, but in general, I think Genesis one and two, uh, even up through, it is it, as you were saying earlier, Andrew. It is it is explaining to us a God behind this whole thing, and I think the more we try to fit science in that, we will get into trouble because I don't think that's what Genesis is trying to actually convey to us. Um, I think there's a lot of poetry and narrative within in Genesis, um, especially, in, I'm just saying the creation uh, story specifically. And to what I, point, quickly, what is it What is it trying to? Oh, I think it's actually, it's it's explaining there is a God that did this all. Like there is a God okay. behind this all. And that that is, this wasn't just some cosmic accident. Because even if you look at the way it's described, like follow, and again, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but follow the way it's written. It's very poetic intentionally because it's an, it's displaying a story because um, I think trying to describe how God created everything would be one really big thing to do. How beautiful and how big of a thing that that would have to, I mean, you're trying to word this in a way for generations of people to know that God did this. That's what I think Genesis does beautifully. And the more you try to make it into a book on dinosaurs, I think you're going to get into trouble. And I think we have a history mm -hmm. of Christians trying to do that with scripture. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we are small creatures in a magnificent creation and all of creation testifies to its creator. Yes. It all points back to this amazing, masterful mind, just absolute genius, super intellect and a God who, who wields these beautiful worlds far away in distant galaxies that we'll never see. But he's a creative God. And um, the Bible tells us that creation was made through him, by him, and for him. So this all belongs to him. So we might get confused and say, why would God create something that I can't enjoy or I can't see, like these distant galaxies or like things that even existed on our planet that we didn't have the chance to see or experience? And the fact is we serve a God who loves to create. That's why we love to create because we're made in his image. And um, so I think as I look at dinosaurs and I you know, I hear about the newest form that's been discovered. And, you know, I look at pictures of fossils. I just think, wow, what an, what an incredible mind created this creature. And, and again, it's, it goes back to that mysterium, right? The mystery of God. What was, what was in his mind when he did this? And I, I like to picture, you know, these creatures, how did they play? What did they sound like? That Parasaurolophus on your desk had that long thing because it was a singer. Mm -hmm. It made songs, that's what that structure was yeah. for. Yeah, it's just that. amazing to me to wonder. Um, so I think it's not something we need to be afraid of. Mm -hmm. It's something we can accept and it can all point us back to worshiping the creator. Yes. Yes. Amen. Well, Amen. Um, a couple last things I'll, I'll add on to this. Uh, one, interestingly, the word dinosaur didn't even exist until about 1841, say, apparently. Yeah. So it yeah. means terrible lizard. Um so, uh, but we probably know dinosaurs more as clever girls now. Again, that's a that's a Jurassic Park throwback. Um, but also, if people clever. do want to learn a little bit more about maybe what was the point of Genesis, how is it interacting with surrounding cultures? Um, not to plug my own material, but I do have a web uh, a series of articles on the website called Old Testament copying um question mark it's a question and we'll get a we'll get a link in the show notes uh for you on that and that, that might help kind of get to some of what lou was talking about with you know what was just how is it interacting in, in its time and what what was the point uh, to you know to what people were kind of talking about what was the actual point and is it a science textbook yeah um but anyway thanks for uh listening we hope you enjoyed it we had fun we love talking about dinosaurs um if you like this one yeah feel free to like it comment subscribe share it with people that really helps us out and if you want your question answered on the podcast just email us at where we begin at lightengroup.org and we'll see you next week bye 
Thanks for joining us. Be sure to check out our Facebook and Instagram by searching Lighten Group. And if you want to know more about what we do or support us financially, please visit our website at lightengroup.org.